Good evening, race fans, and welcome to coverage of the NASCAR iRacing Series on the program of Sports Network Live tonight from Watkins Glen International in Watkins Glen, New York. And James Mike Boyce for putting Sports alongside Taylor Burris and Taylor. Uh, I guess we've officially hit the second half of our season at podium now because we're tweaking the schedule a little bit. We're doing things a little bit differently, and we are bringing to you for the first time on the Podium Esports Network coverage of the top split of one of the premier divisions in all of Iris. Yes, indeed, and this is definitely a very heated competition battle here, the NASCAR iRacing Series. This is the fixed series, of course, so these setups are all based off of some of the iRacing setups that are used here on the service. So it's going to be a great show here tonight. A lot of big names here in tonight's race. A lot of big names in tonight's race. You thought the Elite Series had plenty of big names. You'll see even more of them. And even then, a few names that you've seen in the Elite Series from January to July are in tonight's race here in the NASCAR iRacing Series as well as qualifying as wrapped up. And I suppose that means we can go ahead and roll into tonight's starting grid for this race, the I believe 22nd of the season, if my math is correct, to the NASCAR iRacing Series from Watkins Glen International. Graham Bowler is your pole sitter with a qualifying time of one minute eight seconds point three two or one minute and eight point three two six seconds because I can't do that. I can see Canapino will start from the second spot. Third will be Matt Busso, one of the Elite Series drivers from earlier in the year. Sean Peleg will start from the fourth spot. Yusuf Gasly rolls off from fifth. Sixth is the number four car on Briar the Brad. Daniel Falkingham, who was in the final showdown round and was in the hunt at atlanta a lap away from the elite series championship before andrew fans wrested it away from him good run in that series but he'll start seventh tonight brett founcey will roll off from eighth and ninth will be charlie ryan and dylan jones another elite series driver will roll off from 10. starting in the 11th position is santia gouda will be starting there with raja kara starting 12th colton salek will start in 13th followed by anthony garcia in 14th thomas mcgregor will be starting in the 15th position with thomas bressy the third in 16th Justin Galeb will start in the stable start in 17th position with Kyle Manger starting in 18th. Mike Springer will start 19th and rounding out your top 20 will be Jordan Kaling. Katie Hyatt will start from 21st. John Theodore, Elite Series driver and managing member of Podium Esports, will start 22nd. 23rd will be Ryan Farmer. Scott Lamp, driver of the car's Esports Tour, rolls off from 24th. EJ Lally will begin from 25th. 26th, final driver to take time was Hunter Combs. Jarrett Lieber will start from 27th. Spencer Owens will roll off tonight from 28th. 29th will be the 13th of Nick Northrup. And Freddie De La Rosa will start from 30th. 31st will go to Maxwell Codwell in the 31st position with Sean Williams in 32nd. Robert Clements will start in the 33rd position with Ryan Cowley will be 34th. Eli Gorton will start 35th. Matthew Hulse will start in 36th. And rounding out your 37 car field will be Austin Johnson. There's your starting grid for tonight's race at Watkins Glen International. And we'll take a look now at the track facts here at this very, very famous road course, New York's Thunder Road. It is a very, very long course, so you would think. Uh, one of those cases where you don't necessarily realize how long you have to go. 2.43 miles in particular to get around this racetrack and We'll go for 45 laps here tonight, so somewhere in the ballpark of about 110-ish miles, I would say, since the regular race is about 225. So we're about 50% of the distance that you'll see the drivers in the Cup Series run on Sunday. It should also mean that you're going to have to make at least one pit stop tonight. And if you're curious to see how things are going to shake out, as far as track temps go, 114 degrees track temp right now even with the cloud cover 78 degrees fahrenheit in the air if you're curious about the in sim time it is uh, saturday august the third here in sim uh, just after three o'clock eastern daylight time here at the glen taylor burris it's a road course it's a wild place uh, go ahead and tell us what you expect to see from this race when we get going a lot of issues can happen, especially going into the turn one, the 90. You've seen a lot of incidents happen over the many years, whether it be NASCAR or iRacing. So a lot of drivers are going to have to take it easy on that first lap. But some great passing opportunities can happen, especially over in the bus stop down near the back straightaway of the course. You can see a lot of drivers trying to make their way through the field as quickly as possible down that back straightaway. So keep an eye on what goes on. 
Officially, we've got eight turns listed here at Watkins Glen. What you need to know, though, is that we're happy to have you with us on the iRacing Esports Network as we go green flag racing with the NASCAR iRacing Series. Graham Poland will jump ahead to the front of the field on the Hunt Brothers Pete's Machine. They all come down to this very tight turn one, downhill, hard on the brakes, very easy to wheel hop and spin yourself out, but everybody will fan out wide and make advantage. One car, though, gets spun there right at the end. I couldn't quite tell who it was, but they'll begin to funnel their way in and work their way up through the SC hearing it was Kenny Hyde that got spun there in the beginning and I think maybe a few tire rubs in places as they work their way through the S's onto the back stretch for the first time a couple of cars getting loose coming out of the S's I believe the 24 of Hunter Combs make got loose but was able to get the car under control he's going to lose a couple of positions but does a great job of keeping it off the wall it's down now head down the, towards the bus stop chicanes doing a great job single file as we see a couple of cars trying to make a pass up ahead and the 21 and the 8 battle it out as they go through the carousel Casey Dome and Katie Hyde have pulled it behind the wall after this first lap. So those two done for the night already. Graham Bowen taking off by about maybe two or three car lengths over Agustin Canapino. Who sits in second at the moment. Matt Busa just hanging around there uh, not too far away. Matt Williams Esports Toyota Camry sitting right behind the number 10 of Sean Pillig. Who has Jimmy Johnson colors on a Ford Mustang? That's very controversial right there, if I would say so myself. But hey, he, it's a pain he can, wants to run. He enjoys it. So he's going to try to put on a good effort for that car. I have a feeling that our producer would probably be up in arms over that if he could be. Well, necessarily, no. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately <laughs> chimed in and uh, had more than a little bit to say on that one as soon as uh, we gave him the chance. But in either case, uh, the 10 of Peleg sitting in third, but Boland's already stretched it out. It's about a second lead that he's got over Canapino as they go into the bus stop. And then you've got uh, Peleg and Busha just sort of sitting right there. And then another pack, the second pack, which is led by Yusuf Gasly. You got Briar LaPrade in there, elite series driver Daniel Falking, and Brett Fauci, Charlie Ryan, all in that quartet, quintet, depending on how you see it. And then it's all just a string all the way back to about Jordan Kalinian in the 19th. A lot of clean racing so far. I've seen a couple of drivers get loose coming through certain parts, especially coming out of the S's here before they go down the back straightaway. But so far, everyone's doing a great job keeping it clean. Single file, long race still to go. So everyone's doing a great job as we see a couple of drivers back towards the, the outside of the top 15 to try to battle it out a little bit. But so far, no passes are being made up. Everybody's shuffling all over the place trying to figure out where they need to be and where is the best spot to be. As we watch Graham Boland work his way through the S's and everybody uh, tries to follow suit, but that number four machine is just one machine, I suppose, because I still can't count. Absolutely flying through the bus stop. Nearly got a little bit loose here, but he's still really solid stuff in the early going for Boland. Trying to see if we have any other good battles on track at the moment. Raja Karuth looking very, very racy behind the number 11 of Colton Sonic, and then a whole host of people back there. You've got Thomas McGregor, Thomas Bressy, Anthony Garcia, Justin Gable, Mike Springer, and Jordan Kalenny, and all sort of sitting in place there. That's about 15 to 18, Frank feet somewhere there. So we go on board with Karuth, and he's number 27, Toyota Camry. Yeah, great driving. He gets right up on the back bumper as they're getting ready to go to the final two corners here. It's right there, tries to see if he can get a little bit better exit, but cannot. He gets actually quite a bit loose. Great job of holding on to the car. He will lose about a car length over Colton Salik as they go down the front straightaway here towards the 90. Colton looked to the inside on Dylan C. Jones, but decided not to do it. And here comes Raja as they come out of the 90. Colton in front of them gets a little bit loose, but does a great job of holding control of the car. As they climb up through the S's, it is still going to be Raja right behind Colton coming up. Saw one car get loose. I think it might have been Mike Springer get really, really sideways through one that last time by. But we'll stick with Karuth and Shalak. This battle here for 10th and 11th as it stands. And we'll see if Karuth decides to poke it down inside and find his way alongside the 11. Not quite at this point, though. So they'll come to the bus stop into the carousel and hold serve for the moment. But I think for the most part, you know, there. this is a track where uh, you can get around alongside somebody and maybe make a pass that way. But more often than not, Taylor, this is a place where you end up getting positions more because you make sure you don't make mistakes and someone else does. Just breathe that to get hard on the brakes to avoid running into the back of sound like going into the final two corners. Yeah, this is one of those tracks where you see a lot of drivers make mistakes quickly. I mean, we already have a couple of drivers out as Colton just did make the mistake coming out of the final turn. This is going to cause him 
to constantly have to fight for that position with Raja in that 27. As they go down the front straightaway, Raja breaks a little bit later into the 90. Let's see if he's able to hold it. Colton's going to try the undercut as he now gets to the side by side. Nope, he slides, slides back into place. Just causes the 28 of Charlie Ryan to get to the back bumper of Colton as he climb up the S. So there goes Karuth up into, I believe, that should be the top 10 for the number 27 machine. Next to the list would be the 28 of Charlie Ryan, who has a little bit of work to do, about a second to gain on Salak. But just looking at a lot of these drivers, especially the few around Salak compared to Salak himself, they're able to get on the brakes deeper into these braking zones. I think Salak might be trying to roll into the brakes a little bit more than he needs to, although the front end nose damage that he picked up on the first lap also isn't really helping his case all that much. No, he's definitely going to have to get this fat, fat fix when he comes down for his pit stop later in the race. We might see some drivers pitting around lap 20, some maybe a little bit later into the run. This is only about a 45 lap race, so drivers will have to pick and choose when will be the right time to come down pit road. They'll have to sort of piece that together, and I think there are two ways you do this. I think if you're in the back of the field, you're looking at about lap 15 to 20. If you're up towards the front, you stay out as long as you can and run the full 25 to 30 if you can make it and if you can stretch it. So that'll be something that we'll have to watch and pay attention to as these drivers work their way around what? It's going to be A little bit of an issue for the number 15 of Jordan Kalen, the big distinct position driver. He had a little bit of issues coming out of the final corner, got real loose, and it's going to bring in Mike Springer in that number 23. He's working their way down the front back straightaway right now. And a great job. He could close the gap as they're coming up to the bus stop. He makes a pass right now. Still decides to follow suit right now, but gets a little bit closer as they go through the carousel. Jordan having a difficult time. He's getting a little bit too loose. Might have to do that damage that he's got to that car. And they come out of the carousel down this short shoot until they get to turn 9, 8, 9. Or seven and eight. Seven and eight, uh, depending on how you work it. But eight and nine is usually what we know it as. I think it depends on whether or not you count the bus stop as one or two turns. Regarding this, Kalenian ahead of Springer, and those two have about four seconds on the next driver in line behind them, which would be Nick Northland, because Kalenian got very loose coming out of that final corner. Not quite something that Springer take advantage of, though. I thought he might be able to get a little bit closer to the number 15, but. Is it going to happen this time? We'll see what kind of run he gets out of one, though. Better run, though, for that number 23, the Funyuns machine. I don't know if I've ever seen a Funyuns car on our race, but here we are. Yeah, <laughs> Try, trying to run down uh, this number 15 at Kalenian and the, the rear end of the 15 all over the place. That's one thing I've noticed, even in this fixed setup race. I have a yeah, feeling yeah. that... Uh, it's probably related to the way he's getting into the throttle and the way he's breaking in some of these corners. You see Springer now really putting the pressure on the 15. He is. He's now going to take a peek to the inside as he goes through this carousel section of the course coming off. He gains quite a bit to do there, unlike Jordan, who had a little bit of issues. He gets a little bit loose there to that part of coming out of the corner exit, which is where he is struggling the most as they go down the short shoot towards turn seven. Let's see if Jordan's able to keep together through this section as Mike Springer does a great job. Oh, there he is, getting loose, coming out of turn seven. Does a great job, I gotta say, for keeping control of the car, not putting it into any one of the barriers. It's amazing. We see Kalenian's just right on the edge with the way he's driving this thing. And yet, Springer, for all the options that he has, has been able to catch the 15 as the 24 machine comes down to pit road. That should be Hunter Combs. Ooh, he had some major issues there going into the carousel. It looked like he had no brakes at all. It just makes a hard impact into the Arco barrier. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't think that's how you want to do that here. I mean, no. can, 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 you, can, can, can you do it that way? But that's, that's, that's not usually all that good. Well, good news from the driver. He did say he was okay. So that's very good to hear. And this is Iris. And there we go. Speaking of, there goes Springer around Kalenian. Kalenian did not get his exit right through the bus stop. And all of a sudden, Springer got to his inside, made it very, very quick work of Kalenian. So Springer will go up into 16th. And that's been a pass that, in fairness, I think has been coming for about the last two to three laps. It's just a matter of when Springer would find the open. Battle for P5 right now between Briar LeBron and the likes of Yusuf Ghali. As they're going down to turn one, they're going to try to go side by side, but cannot make it work. Briar was able to get right up to the inside coming out of turn eight, but could not just cut the power down as they go out of there down the front stretch. Up the S's they go. 
Usopp doing a great job to keep Briar right behind him. And Briar's closing and closing. He's going to definitely try to use the slipstream, try to make a pass. He gets loose, though, coming out of the S's, but saves it. Now he's going to lose about a car length distance between him and Usopp. Yeah, so he'll lose a car length to Gale. We'll make sure he can't get alongside the 20, at least in the bus stop. And that might also bring Brett Fauci into the battle as well. It's the number three machine comes up on the rear bumper of LeBron. Yeah, that mistake caused Brett to get right closing into the back bumper of La Prada as they go down the short shoot into turn seven. Let's see what they're able to do as they're going into turn seven. Both drivers are making it through. No one's gained any time on each other yet into the final corner of turn eight. Still no to tail between the top of these three drivers. Everybody just sort of hanging out and starting to find a rhythm or at least as best of a rhythm as you can at Watkins Glen. But this being a road course, it, it can be difficult, especially if you don't nail your entrance into this corner. Turn one, probably probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest corner outright to hit on this circuit, just because of the way everything falls off. It's the only real corner where you have a very dramatic dip. Uh, going down the hill into the braking zone. Most of these other corners are either relatively flat or uphill, in a sense. And it, it makes it very, very tough to get on the brakes the right way. Well, another driver who had a difficult time getting on the brakes the right way was Freddy De La Rosa. Got real loose coming out of the S's and unable to control it, put it into the Armco barrier. He is down on pit road right now, so unfortunate. It could end his night here tonight. So. We'll see if he manages to make it out back onto the racetrack. Don't see anybody in pit road at the moment outside of De La Rosa, but uh, he'll be stuck and buried way, way back in things. Currently scored in the 44th or 34th position, rather, as we turn our attention to. Found it. There we go. Thomas Bressy in the 25 machine. To might have a look here to the inside of Charlie Ryan going down into turn one. He'll get on the brakes, down shift. Won't quite have it, though. Ryan will be able to maintain that spot for the moment, but not before he manages to jump ahead of Bressy and really begin to stretch him out. Yeah, this is a great onboard to see you, Thomas Bressy, as they're going up through the S's. Notice how he's able to hold onto the wheel real well, nice and steady through there, and then utilize the slipstream to try to see if he can close that gap on that 26 run. Not much slipstream that you get here at Watkins Glen as, oh, Ryan got really sideways on the entry into the bus stop and still, I think, managed to open up the gap on Bressy just a little bit. So it looks like he's in a decent spot for the moment. I think the battle, though, to watch here has to be Gasly, LaPrade, and Falsi at the moment. Those three are closer than just about anybody else on this racetrack. Gally doing a great job to hold off the competition right now in that number 20. Toyota is going down the front straightaway still, doing a great job of holding off the rest of these two other drivers that are behind him. They go down into the 90s, still no competition as far as for positioning to get the car right where they need as they climb up the S's again, to try to complete another time up here. Hopefully nobody gets loose still. Gally still holding on, hitting those marks, hitting the curbs right where he needs to, so that way he can get a best exit out of the S's. I believe that four car got a better run out of there. We can see what we can do as they go down towards bus stop chicane. A better run, but he's still not close enough to make a run on the number 20 machine. And he'll get a little bit closer in this bus stop. But uh, I, I, it's a difficult one. I can't tell which one of these three drivers is the fastest at the moment. And that's the tricky thing. And we could look at lap times here and see where they've been. Golly, put down a 111 the last time by. To 111.2 to a 111.4 to a 111.4. So... And Gali actually was a little bit faster than the two drivers behind him. But still, they're within tenths of one another. And a Watkins Glen, that's barely anything, especially with the length of the laps here. Exactly. This, you get, so for a road course, you can get surprisingly quick around this circuit, especially in these NASCAR Cup cars. I mean, less than a minute and 15 seconds for those who are the fast, and then all under a minute and 10 for those who are the more faster drivers. So these three will continue to snake their way uh, through turn one up to the S's. We'll see if there are any other good battles to keep an eye on on track. Uh, looks like you've got Colton Salek now back here to Charlie Ryan and Thomas Cressy. This is a group that uh, we paid attention to uh, multiple times already tonight, and I have a hunch that uh, we're going to learn a little bit more here 
as they work lap 13 of 45, just around the uh, four third distance, I guess. Uh, as uh, our good buddy David Schildhouse would know, I'm not necessarily the best of mathletes, but uh, definitely closing in on uh, that third mark here within the next few laps or so. Salak has got 11 for the moment. Ryan and Bressy would like to challenge him and take it away. Looks like Breyer was able to find a way to get by Yusuf as they come out of turn eight, doing a great job. Now, Brett Fossey is going to try to see if he can do the same as they go down the front straightaway. Here they go. Nose tail in that number three car. He's currently sitting in the seventh, trying to get by the 20 of Yusuf for sixth place. As they go down into the 90s still, Yusuf gets laid into the break, trying to see if he can close that gap on Briar LeBrad, but cannot make the deal work as they climb the S's now. Red Fussy lost a little bit of time now, separates a car lane, but now Yusuf gets a little bit loose through the S's as they come out of there. Let's see if Briar is able to do anything. No, he cannot. He has to back off in order to running in from the back bumper of Yusuf and go down the back straight away. So Fousey will have a shot to try and get Gali here, but... Uh, for the moment, uh, Gali actually got a really good run down the back straight, was able to open it up by about a car length, at least give himself some breathing room coming through the carousel. But, and just like that, Fauci got a great run out of the bus stop into the carousel. So they're sort of trading runs, I think, trading momentum spots. And we know with this particular cut package, the momentum is so important. It is very, very much like a short track car in that regard. And I think this place, much like a lot of the other tracks in the schedule, is no different. You really notice it here, especially more so than Sonoma, because you have these long straightaways that you work with. Sonoma doesn't really have too many beeline sort of straights, not like you have on the front stretch here, not like you have on the back stretch, and even turn one all the way up to the bus stop. You can really bomb these cars down some of these straights if you set it up right. Yes, indeed, and that's one of the key factors that we'll see a lot of these drivers do, especially in this series, is momentum, trying to utilize the best possible exit they can get in order to be able to gain a position. As a matter of fact, these three drivers are catching up to the fourth place car of Sean Felix, who is not too far up the road from them in that number 10 loads. Uh, Ford Mustang unfortunately had a little bit of damage to that car as they're going through he's going through the bus stop made a big mistake through there that's going to cause Briar to gain a lot of time through there and I believe Sean might have cut the course a little bit so he had to take a time penalty for that if they come out of the carousel Briar is definitely closing in on that back bumper beginning to run down the 10 machine but he's still got a ways to go still has two seconds to make up and you know, when you look at the distance you can see it there on all on boards you really see how much work LaPrade has to do. The good thing going for LaPrade, though, I believe very consistent lap time numbers over the last year. It's been 111, 111, 111, 111, 111 within about maybe two, three tenths of a second the last four or five laps. And that's consistently better. Uh, and say, so, yeah, within four tenths of a second over the last five laps. They've all been pretty equal times. So uh, LaPrade, I think, definitely in a really, really good rhythm at the moment. You can see Peleg beginning to back up to him a little bit as well. Okay, what Poland has been able to put a major gap, almost a little close to four seconds over that six car of Canapino and doing a great job. And Matt Busa is still sitting in that third position, still about some seven seconds back. So could be a little bit of painting sheet and waiting till the pit stop strategy happens in order to try to see if he can leapfrog the competition during green flag pit stops which I think may come here trying to see if anybody's going to try and start ducking down. But uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, everybody's still out here now, but I think the window is going to start opening up very, very shortly to where you could, in theory, pit and go the rest of the way if you play it right. So something that we'll definitely need to be aware of over the next few laps is Bouncy is all over the rear bumper of Golly to try and get away six. One thing to keep an eye now with Graham Bolin, our leader, he is actually approaching lap traffic. He's closing in on the nine car of Scott Lamp II, as well as Robert Clements, who are just up the road from him. Still a little bit of time right now to where these two can maybe pull out of the way or go down the pit road, but still, Graham's gonna have to find a way to make get to navigate through the lap traffic as we're closing in. So we shall see how Bolin manages to sneak his way through that first car up the road here is Scott Lamp of the nine machine uh, and I think Bolin's going to be able to run away in pretty short order and then you've got Robert Clements up there I see Eli Gorton in here Sean Williams all uh, within the ballpark and 
uh, not necessarily bunched together, but certainly close enough to where Boland's going to have to sort of flip on and flip off his rhythm and maybe switch up a few corner entry points and breaking points to make sure that he gets around these drivers as quickly as he possibly can. Smart move, move by the nine car. He just pulls over on the front straightaway, lets our leader go by, and now it's just one down and a few more to go, and he should be in the clear for a little bit. So you would think. So you would think. His, uh, Bressy has managed to get around Salak, and now Ryan is behind Salak, and that, I think, is your best battle on track at the moment. Uh, as Oh, I think Ryan might have clipped the wall there. Did he clip the wall on corner exit? So... The commentator scores is alive and well from the opening broadcast of the NASCAR iRacing Series here on the Buddy of Esports Network. I wish I could say I was surprised. A little bit of trouble in the carousel with the number 12 car. He got hit the wall a little bit. That was Spencer Owens in that number 12. Was able to save it and continue on, but he did lose a position to Sean Williams in the 22. Let's see what he's able to do. He does have a little bit of damage to the rear and the nose of the car. So he is going to be struggling a little bit for grip as they're coming out of turn seven and into turn eight. Yeah, just sort of bounced off the wall there. I think he might have gotten loose, might have overdrove the corner exit to spin himself down into that inside retaining wall. So he's going to have to regroup for the damage and sort of kick on and push on as best he can. And, you know, Bowling is really stretching out here. It's almost three seconds of change over Canapino and then Boost has got another four seconds to make up just to get to the rear bumper of the six. And then you find our group uh, 13 seconds back officially. Sean Peleg, Brian on the front, and Yusuf Galli all in there. And, and Brett Founcey, too. They've strung themselves out a little bit more than they had uh, maybe two or three laps ago, but still all relatively close to one another at the moment and all within each other's eyesight. A lot of great battles here today at the Watkins Glen. Still looking around the field, we see Dylan Jones going up against Santiago Aguda as they're going up through the S's. The number two car closing into the back number of that 35 and come out of the S's. Dylan gets a great run. He's going to go down the back straightaway, try to close in. He's not going to be close enough to make a pass down through the bus stop, but will be able to close in. Maybe try to set something up for maybe turn seven or turn eight. One of those cases where if you really nail your run out of the carousel, you certainly have the opportunity to do something. Also a note here, uh, have my eye on the 27 of Raja Kuruku has been gaining ever so slightly on Dylan Jones over the last few laps. And uh, you look at a lot of these drivers, especially in the top 10, not too many folks who qualified outside of the top 10 have managed to sneak their way into the top 10. The only three Santiago Gugo, Dylan Jones, Raja Karuthu, and only our eighth month and tenth month in the So doing a great job of getting into the top ten and putting on a great show for us here today at Watkins Glen. Wait and see one more time. Go uh, along with Karuth and with Dylan Jones. Those two really starting to bunch up and beginning to see a battle brewing in the distance and off in the horizon. And... Uh, we'll see what Caruth can do. Maybe maybe in a lap or so, certainly doesn't have the speed to go after Jones at the moment, but depending on how he handles the bus stop, the carousel might be pretty close to the two next time. Up. He might be as they go to the bus stop right now. Dylan Jones does his best, but loses a little bit of time as they're approaching the killers. Carousel Raju, Raju does a great job of closing that gap. He gets a great execution out of the bus stop. They come out of the carousel running towards the turn eight. So far, still not enough to make any passes, but enough to maybe just be there in case there another mistake does happen for Dylan Jones. Caruth now all over the rear bumper of that number two of Dylan Jones, the SK Sim Racing Machine, trying to hang on to that ninth place run that he's got going for the moment. And Caruth got a little bit sideways out of the corner too, so won't quite get the run that he needs down the front stretch try and pass Jones in turn one but this turn can really separate people it's one place where if you run it wide and you really mess up your entry one of those cases where you can lose anywhere from a full second to a half a second is uh, Jones definitely got through one way better than Caruth did opened up about two to three car lengths there that last time on hey what another driver who did a great job with the pass was Brett Fossey and that number three he was able to get by Yusuf Gali will easily as they come out at the 90 you saw you know, tonight made a little bit of a mistake coming out of there that caused Brett to go to the inside and just make the power down up the S's. Now he's pulled about a good gap as they're coming out of the carousel, making the run to turn seven. 
Usopp's trying to find a way to close the gap, but unfortunately, Brett Fossey is starting to pull away. Fossey starting to pull away. Caruth had the inside lane. Owen Jones coming out of the carousel and then got loose just as they started coming down onto the front stretch. And he'll have to back it up and try again one more time here in a little bit. But that two machine is all over the place. Definitely doesn't quite have any sort of rear grip whatsoever. And Caruth really, really starting to pressure now. And he'll come down pit road incidentally. So Jones will cede the position to Caruth and come in for four tires of fuel. Another driver who is going to come down pit road is Golly. He's going to also make his pit stop here. I believe I see another driver on the pit road. That must be the 37. He must have had some damage early on somewhere on track. That would be Anthony Garcia currently sitting in 32nd, but he is on pit road. Another driver who's also coming down pit road, Charlie Ryan in the 28. So we're starting to see some of the back markers starting to work their way down pit road to complete their pit stop. So it's only going to be a matter of time before we get to the drivers as Graham Bolin has. I was about to say, Graham Bolin in the number one machine is beginning to look pretty solid here through the lap traffic. We'll see if he decides to come down pit road this time. Yes, yes he, he does. does. So That's here's your race leader, Graham Bolin, coming in for what should be his one scheduled pit stop of the evening. We're waiting to see who else will be coming down pit road. Busa decides to stay out. Trying to see if any other drivers the six car it also decides to stay out. So he is currently going to be your new leader for the time being. Augustus Capino. Augustus Capino up to the front at the moment. This Bowling gets into his box cleanly. Probably four tires of fuel. Nothing too crazy for the driver of the number one machine who has been out in front since the beginning of this race. He started on the pole and led every lap before he came down for service. And I imagine he should probably cycle back into the lead if we can complete this green flag pit cycle without any yellow flags. But Bowling back out on the racetrack and service completed. So our attention turns to Canapino and then Matt Busso, who's just a little bit further back in second on track at the moment. Right as they're making their way towards turn seven and eight. Let's see what they decide to do right now. Augustin coming through the final corner. Is he going to respond and come down pit road or is he going to go another lap? Yes, he is. He is going to respond to make the pit stop. Coming down to get his service required needed. Let's see. Matt Busa, is he going to stay? He's going to stay at another lap. So put Matt Busa as your new race leader. He must have a different strategy in play here to see what he can do, but it looks like the rest of the field is going to be coming down pit road. So Busa will stay out one more lap. He'll come in, coming to lap 25 of 45, and everybody else is going to come in for service now. It seems like so Busa might be one of the last drivers to come down on pit road. As I look at this, just trying to see who all has it. It's, I think, Brett Fousey, EJ Lally, Ryan Farmer, Matthew Hulse, Max Caldwell, Sean Williams, Robert Clements. I think are the only ones who still have yet to pit. Interesting strategy call for some of these drivers, as I think they might be able to definitely will make it on fuel for here on now, but also just trying to see about how the time will be between the drivers when they come off pit road compared to these other drivers who have pitted early. They have fresh tires. They can be able to get on the track a little bit quicker. But these drivers have these worn tires. That's going to cause them to lose quite a bit of time as Matt Boos is coming towards turn seven and coming down towards turn eight. Let's see if he's going to come down pit road. Have to believe Boos. he will this time. Yes, he and, is. Yeah, makes that an easy call. Had to respond with the way that Bowen and Canapino had come in just the two laps before. So Busa not going to take any chances here. Ran it one extra lap, so we'll have a little bit fresher rubber for the final run to the checkered flag in the second half of this race. But for now, it's four tires and fuel most likely for the driver of the number seven, Williams Esports Toyota Camry. Let's see what he does. Matt Busa finally gets to his stall. Graham Bolwin will now come across. He will be your new race leader again, back to the top of the leaderboard. And Busa had to back it up. He didn't quite get into his pit stall the right way and had to shuffle his car around to actually get it in the stall. So that'll be a pretty significant chunk of time loss for Busa. I have a feeling that's going to back him up probably into the group of Fauci and Lepred and Gali, I believe, all should be pretty close to each other. Yeah, that will sh shuffle it up a little bit for Matt Busa. So let's see what he has to deal with now as he's going to make his way out of pit road here momentarily. I think he will at least lose one, maybe not, if not two positions. Actually, a few more than that by the looks of it. 
I see the likes of Brett Fauci, Dylan Jones, Yusuf Ali, all in front of him right now. And Sean Pelek. So, a little bit of work for Matt Busa to do, and we'll see if he can drive up through the field. And in the meantime, waiting to see. Uh, I think Fauci is the only driver here who's yet to make his pit stop, if I'm reading everything correctly. So we'll keep our eyes on the three, and then EJ Lally as well. All the way down in 20, well, 13th rather, because everything gets wonky here when you try and deal with pit stops. We'll wait and see. Watch Fauci as he comes through the final corner, and I believe, yeah, no, he's going to stay out on track one more time. So Fauci going to run it into the dirt a little bit coming out of the final corner onto the front stretch, but Fauci currently scored in the third spot. We'll see how long that holds. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do right now as Dylan Jones is currently sitting in sixth position right now in front of him along with Yusuf Ghali. So these drivers have already made their pit stop, so it's going to see how well they can hold up over Brett Fossey, which he is losing a little bit of time to him right now as they come out of the S's. Still, Fossey going to have to pretty much just come down pit road soon as Matt Busa is starting to close that gap to get back into the top seven and to make the run towards the bus stop. Matt Busa laid into the brakes, does a great job, gained a lot of time through there. As they come out towards the carousel, Matt Busa, he is on the charge. He is looking to find his way at least get back into the top five. And you can see the difference between old and new tires right there in that run through the bus stop. You saw how much later Booster was able to get on the brakes and just dive it deep into corner entry. Fauci couldn't do that with the old tires that he's got. These things have been really, really all over the place. We'll see what the three can do. And actually, I'm wondering if he might have been out there in three pit stalls and might just look at the technical bus here on anything else. I actually think he may have pitted it. We just missed it here. It might leave Robert Clements as the only driver yet to make the pitch stop. And at that stage, I think we can go ahead and maybe bring you an iRacing Midway race break, perhaps? That looks like a good idea. And it sounds like a good idea to me. So we'll go ahead and bring you tonight's iRacing Midway race break. Ponzi by iRacing, world's leading online racing simulation. Developed from the beginning as a centralized competition service, iRacing organizes, hosts, and Offers racing from virtual racetracks and cars all around the world. iRacing is a one-stop shop for officially sanctioned racing from series across the globe, including the Australian Supercars, the Car Store, right here on the Podium Esports Network, IndyCar, IMSA, NASCAR, the World of Outlaws, and more. Graham Boland is your race leader after 27 laps complete of 45. Dylan Jones is in second. Brett Fauci currently scored in the third spot. And, uh, actually, we're backing up. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll back it up because Fauci did finally come down pit road, I think, or lose something. So we'll we'll sort through that and see what happened. But uh, it's Bowen, Caterpillar to Pratt, and then Sean Pitt like, currently in fourth. Yusuf Ghali currently sits in the fifth spot. Dylan Jones sits in sixth. Seventh is Matt Boucher, about to be sixth as he gets around Dylan Jones. He slides back to seventh. Fauci is actually sort of the eighth spot. Ninth is Santi Agudo, and Raja Karuth currently sits in tenth. Currently sitting in the 11th position will be Thomas Bressy the third, followed by Jarrett Libier in 12th position. Charlie Ryan is currently in 13th with Mike Springer 14th. Colton Salek will be currently running in 15th position with Jordan Kalian in 16th, with John Theodore being the last car on the lead lap in 17th. When we get up to some of our lap down competitions, such as EJ Lally in 18th, Austin Johnson in 19th, and Matthew Hulse rounds out your top 20. Ryan Farmer is currently scored in 21st. 22nd is Spencer Owens. Justin Gable sits in 23rd. And 24th is Nick Northrup. Ryan Cowley currently running in the 25th spot. 26th belongs to Thomas McGregor. Sean Williams is in the 27th spot. 28th belongs to Eli Gorton. Maxwell Caldwell currently in 29th. And 30th is the 30 of Robert Clemens. And then, of course, we got the rest of the field. These are some of our drivers who are currently having some issues. 31st goes to Scott Lance with Anthony Garcia, who is currently out in 32nd. Kyle Manger in 33rd out. Freddie De La Rosa is also out in 34th position with Hunter Combs in 35th. And then Daniel Falkingham is 36th. And Katie Height is 37th. And that will complete tonight's iRacing Midway Race Break with over 80 Cars and tracks and over 80,000 drivers on the circus. iRacing is the original esports racing game. And for more information, you can log on to www.iracing.com today. So, this is still the Graham Mullen Show. Make no mistake about it. That man has been all over this field from the very beginning of this race. And 
and really doing a nice job stretching all of this out over the lengths of Canafino and the Pratt and company. Yeah, he's doing a great job over trying to hold the field, but another driver who has been on the move is Matt Busa. He now has broken inside the top five and has the likes of the number 10 car, Sean Pelek, right in front of him, and he is closing down on him as Matt Busa comes across the line. It's at 109 as he comes across. Still a 109.9 compared to Sean Pelek, who's at a 110. So Pelek goes a little bit offline in the 90s. So that's going to cause the likes of Matt Busa to start closing that gap ever more to try to get back into the top four. And run down Prelick, and then you got lap traffic in between those two. I believe that should be Nick Northrup, the 13th place car driver, um, or rather the 24th place car, the uh, number 13 on track. Because math, math is hard, and it's not fun, and nobody likes it either, right? So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I, I don't know if it's quite, you know, full on like three days grace. I hate everything about you, but. Uh, definitely words and words and lots of words. Uh, I guess we got to say thank you to Maximal Lion for all the gift subscriptions tonight. Haven't had a chance to do that. So, uh, and to Dirty Air as well for the gift subscriptions. To some guy named Taylor that you might know about, Taylor. And then uh, also we can add to that Colby 8824, USA Firearms, Graham Abolin, Norton Will, and Uncle Leo. Uh, and uh, Mike 45845, Michael Polasek. We know him pretty well over here at Podium Esports. So a uh, big thanks to everybody who's gifted the subscriptions this evening. And a big thanks for uh, your continued support of the best competition in sim racing, the best broadcasting in sim racing. And a big thank you to everybody watching on the stream tonight. Yeah, because without you guys, we're not able to do what we love to do, which is bring you guys some of the greatest esports racing action here on the iRacing service. So big thank you to all of you. Bowling out in front by, it's still, it's been three seconds pretty much the whole night. Uh, Canapino has been the only one to stay in the same zip code as Busha again, trying to put pressure on P Leg, still just sort of hanging out there. The crowd, though, has jumped out ahead of that group of P Leg and Busha, and Gale and Fausti and Kempton by about, oh, what, four or five seconds? He's a bit free of everyone. And then you got Busha sliding side. Yeah, he what a save. Out, I, I, we'll call it eight. Uh, the iRacing says eight. I'll say nine just because I count the bus out as two corners. So uh, they'll come out of nine onto the front stretch and down into turn one one more time. We'll see what sort of time that was gain this lap round as they work 32 or 45. Well, he is doing a great job even with that spin. He is or that looseness coming out of turn seven. It's a great job of keeping the car and still going to gain time on Sean Peleg as they climb up the S's. Sean trying to hit his mark. Busa hitting a mark for mark as they come out of the S's down this back straightaway towards the bus stop. He's closing in about a car length separates the two drivers now as they go to the bus stop. Hard onto the brakes we see Busa go. Sean Peleg tries to dive it in a little bit deeper as they hit the curbing. Peleg gets loose. Busa's now going to close the gap but has nowhere to go to make the pass. He's going to have to wait till maybe coming out of the carousel to try to get by Sean Peleg. How do you run the carousel if you're Matt Busa? That's the question at the moment to see if he can maybe set something up maybe for eight or nine, which is what it looks like he might just try and do. It'd be a big dive. It would it would definitely qualify as full sin if he decides to go all the way down on the 10 machine going into eight. But he'll lay off here, get right on the rear bumper, and he'll make the move into nine and get underneath that 10 machine. And Matt Busa should, when they get to turn one, clear Sean Felix for good. And he should be able to move Matt Busa up into four. Time. He's still not cleared yet. He's got about a quarter of the nose to clear before they go into the 90. As he gets a little bit loose under braking, Sean Pilek almost makes contact with Boos as they come out of the 90. Up the S's, but he was able to make the pass. Put Matt Boos up to P4 now. So Boos has gained another spot. Next up on the list is going to be Briar LaPrade. And Boos is just now coming onto the back stretch as LaPrade enters the bus stop. So some work to do. For Busa, but he, I think he definitely has the speed. You look at the last few lap times here and go from the likes of Latrade to Busa. It was a 110.4 last time around for the number seven machine, a 111.1 for the Pran. So Busa's got a full second on uh, Latrade, and I have a hunch, give it about maybe another five, six laps, we might see a battle for third between Busa and Bryant. Most definitely. I mean, these two drivers will have been battling it out for a while. Once they get up 
Brian's been doing a great job all day long to try to keep that car where it is, keep it clean, and been making some great passes before the pit stop cycles. And Busa, of course, you know, has strong a competitor he is on this circuit anyway. We'll see him closing in to the little plaid before this race is over as he's gained a couple of more a little bit now. As, of course, Graham Boland just on an absolute tear. Uh, Bol Boland's checked out. Canapino's definitely brought the gap back. Oh, <laughs> by what? Maybe two tenths, if that's someone the ballpark of. But uh, three tenths now. He's gaining a little bit. A, a little bit, but it's still, he needs more. Uh, and definitely needs to really turn on the wick here in the last 10 laps in a way that we haven't really been able to see Canapino do all night long. Maybe he's been saving something and we just don't know. But if he has, it's about now that we need to start seeing it. I'm starting to see it now on the relatives. It's now down to 2.4. Before we were saying it was 2.7, 2.8. So he has found something at least. Let's see what happens when he comes across the line. When they come across is still going to be 2.5. So lost a little bit of time there, but still compared to when he was in the carousel, he has gained about two tenths on the leader. Two tenths, but still a long way to go. Yeah, still a lot of work to do, I think, as well. Busa will continue to push on and try and catch everybody ahead of him. And I think at this point, it's you, you've got a few battles that are shaping up to the end. You've got Canapino versus Bolin for the race win. You've got uh, Laprade and Busa fighting for third. And then you've got Peleg trying to take care of business with Gali, Fauci, Dylan Jones is there, Santi Giro, and Ranja Karuth. Oh, within about maybe, what, 10 seconds of one another? I would say about five to ten seconds. Yeah, depending on how far you go back. Yes. It also depends on if you actually trust my math, which I think most people would know. They, you should uh, never do math when doing a broadcast. You should know well, this. Well, point. you you should no, not that I shouldn't do math. You just shouldn't trust me. That's the thing. Because no, normally when I do uh, math, it, it ends up being a really bad thing. Is I'm not even going to attempt to try and match Steve Post's pronunciation of Raja Kuru. Our producer sips Haterade, no surprise there. Wouldn't be the first time. He, he's, he's perpetually salty and or crabby. I guess the question I guess the question is whether or not uh, he managed to sip his Haterade earlier today as we will get set to bring out our favorite feathered friend. Would you do us the honors for us to burst now that you know what's going on? Of course, ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to cue the Chuck. As we bring you tonight's podium esports trivia question, and as always, we remind you of the rules. First and foremost, that employees and contractors of putting esports LLC are ineligible to participate. And second, uh, that only one response per person per broadcast will be allowed for anybody in chat. Any responses after your first will be deleted from the chat. So make sure you think before you speak. The Finger Lakes region of New York is home to a lot of things. A lot of people love to come up here in the summertime month and not just watch the racing, but go boating on lakes and go have fun with lakes and go do things in the water. But they're not the only ones that use the lake. The U.S. Navy also uses the lakes as well. And tonight's question asks you, what does the U.S. Navy test in the Finger Lakes region of New York? It's a testing ground for a very particular type of naval technology. So give us that answer, and you'll get Chuck's undying love and affection for the evening as the winner in tonight's podium esports trivia question. Looks like Bolin was able to still manage that gap over the six car as they're coming through right now. Still no pressure at all. It is still stayed around between the 2.4 and the 2.6 second gap. So really, it is pretty much Graham Bolin's race to lose here. But the battle right now is between Fauci and the likes of Golly as they're going through the bus stop. We see Dylan Jones in the background trying to close the gap, but doing a great job between these two drivers. We're on board now with Fauci as they come out of the carousel. Great driving. As Golly gets a little bit loose coming out of there. Golly's just been hanging out in front of Falsy, I think, for a very significant chunk of the evening. Has not 
really lost too much ground here, but hasn't been able to separate himself from the three car at all throughout a vast majority of this race. Well, speaking of the number three, it looks like Matt Busa has finally got by Briar LaPrade as our, he is now the new driver in the third position. But it's going to be a tall order for Matt Busa to try to get to second as he is some 20 seconds at least from Augustus Capino. And still, with not that many laps to go, it's going to be a tall order for him. I think Matt Busa just needs to settle in for that third position unless something happens. Would be a good point tonight for Busa if he can manage to pull that off. But Canapino and Bolin are well out in front here. And Canapino's been a little bit faster over oh. uh, the last few laps, but not enough again. It's still just sort of hovering at that 2.4, 2.5 second range. It was 2.5 at the strike the last time by with seven laps to go. If you're Canapino, you have to start clicking off about two to three cents every lap just to get to Bolin as no surprise, Mert Chicken. He's the man who comes away with the win in tonight's Chuck Pudup trivia question. Sonar technology is what is tested in the Finger Lakes region of New York. So if you like sound waves and you like sound waves and you like sound waves, then we get your sound waves for you. And Chuck Pudup will give his undying love and affection to Mark Chicken, tonight's winner of the Chuck Pudup trivia Jury question here on the Podium Sports Network. So, big congratulations to Merck Chicken. Thank you to everyone for participating. Keeping eyes here on Canapino, who, if anything, has lost ground to Poland that last time by and is struggling to keep up, I think, with the one machine. This is Boland uh, really just making sure that he doesn't make any mistakes here over the last few laps. Let's give a little love to some of the drivers who are towards the back of the pack. There's a battle going on for the 22nd position. That's between Justin Gable and Nick Northrup as they came out of the carousel coming towards turn eight, seven and eight right now. Nick Northrup doing a great job of trying to keep the car on track. He is a lap down as we see Gable go a little bit almost offline into the grass. He's been trying to battle with the 29 of Ryan Farmer, who's in 21st. As Ryan gets a little bit loose coming out of turn eight, that's going to cause Justin maybe close the gap just a little bit as Nick looks to the inside, but nowhere near to make a pass. So he has to follow back in line as to go down into turn one. Nick got way loose coming out of nine that last time I ended to go down to the inside of the racetrack just to save that number 13 machine. So Gable is going to be able to hang on to the spot for the moment and make sure that he will continue to run in 22nd as Northrop will try and regroup. And incidentally, right behind these two is that battle that we've been talking about for a good chunk of this evening between Gale and Falsi. Yeah, they're coming up on these guys for the battling for the 21st position as these two are going through the bus stop right now. Falsi trying to find a way to sneak a peek to the inside, but he's not close enough. He gets right now on the back bumper as he makes a great exit out of the bus stop through the carousel they go. Still hugging that inside line as best he can to get the best run off. Bousy trying to find a way to sneak peek as they make the run down turn seven. Bousy's still not close enough. He's going to wait patiently as they go through turn seven. Let's see if Gale tries to make a mistake. He does not. I'll get a little bit onto the barrier but or the curbing right there, but it does a great job to keep it on track. As they come out of turn eight, both of them get a little bit loose. I think Gale got a little bit looser than Bousy did. So Fauci's going to try to take a peek as they go down the front straightaway. Going to follow suit now at that battle up there for the 21st position. Justin Gable's going to get that position. And they almost go three wide up through the S's. Makes twice up, and Northrop gains another position as well. Biggest loser, Ryan Farmer. Yeah, Farmer was the one who was just sort of stuck in the middle there. Couldn't really go anywhere. And all of a sudden, he's got here full of Gale and Fauci, who both managed to slip around the outside. But... Definitely think that cost them a little bit of time as they clear Farmer and get back to their own battle, at least for a little bit. But you've got Gable and Northrop right ahead of Gally and Fauci. And I have a feeling that this battle for the 21st position, or 22nd position rather, might end up getting into the way of the battle that we have for six as Fauci clears Gally in the carousel and takes over the spot. It's like Gally just went a little bit too high into the carousel, causing Fauci to make the pass on the inside, and he is now pulled about a two-car length advantage as they come out of turn seven, making the run to turn eight. I see Gally's losing a lot of time right now. It's probably now down three, over three or four car lengths separating the two. 
all of a sudden, Fauci with the speed here, he shot away from Gali out like he was a cannonball and has managed to gap that number 20 machine by just about a second, almost a second and a half already. And it was only, what, about half a lap ago that he managed to get around the 20 machine. So Fauci turning all the wick here in the final few laps. And not too far behind the him of uh, Gali either is Dylan Jones, about a second or so behind him as well. See if we can find what Sean Palig is up to. And see if we can watch him go after Briar LaPrade in the number four machine. LaPrade with a little bit of damage to the right front of his Toyota Camry. Sort of twitching around all over the place. And, and Palig's been just trying to claw back from his pit stop and get around LaPrade the whole race, or at least the whole second half of this race. And here we are coming up on three laps to go. He's going to have a shot at the four machine to get the four spot away from Briar. He's doing everything that he can. He tries to close and gets loose, though, coming out of turn eight, though. He's going to lose some time as they go down the front straightaway. He has to also deal with the lap traffic of E.J. Lally, who's behind him as he goes into turn one, hard into the breaking zone, into the 90. He may try to undercut, not close enough to make it work as Briar LaFrad holds him off as they make the climb up the S's. LaFrad will scoot away just a little bit, but it's not all that much. LaFrad will continue to push on, and P League will try and sort things out amongst himself and amongst and that number 10 machine as they come down the back straight away and work their way around lap traffic. It's the number 36 machine that they'll get around and dig the bus. Oh, that was nearly scary there for p -Leg. He almost got into it with Austin Johnson, but just cleared that 36 and now can resume his charge to try and get after the crowd. And he definitely is as they come out of the carousel. LaProud gets loose. Now Peleg tries to take a look at the outside. Cannot make it work. He's going to have to follow suit as they go down towards turn seven. Hard onto the braking. We see Peleg go. He almost touches bumpers as they go through turn seven. As they come out of there, LaProud was able to pull him out of car lane gap, but is still has nowhere to go as he has to deal with John Theodore, who is stuck in front of him. Theodore moves out of the way. They come out of turn eight. Theodore will step aside as these two come to two laps to go. And if you're curious, Graham Bolin is your leader and has about a lap and a half to go. He's up in the bus stop already as these two come through one and manage to hop out through this stretch here, this run up to the S's into the back stretch. Great run by LaPrade. He was able to pull away on the corner entry, but Sean Pilek gets a great run off corner exit as they go down the back straightaway towards the bus stop. Pilek in that number 10 car. Losing a little bit now, about half a car length separates two as they go into the braking zone of the bus stop. LaFrad does a great job to try to keep the car, but he loses it a little bit. Here comes Peleg to the outside. Peleg goes to the outside as they go to the carousel. LaFrad tries to hold the inside. He's going to try to make it stick, but cannot. He's trying to get a nose underneath Peleg as they come out of the carousel. Cannot make it work. He's going to have to slot back into the fifth position. That's an impressive move for Peleg to go around with Pratt on the outside of the carousel to get the spot as Graham Poland has already taken the white flag and this is almost a ceremonial procession. He's managed to open it back up on Canapino by about a second. It's about three and a half at the moment and Boland's just got to complete this last half of a lap cleanly and he'll be on his way to victory in the top split of tonight's NASCAR iRacing Series event at Watkins Glen. Talk about dominance right there. Graham Bolin doing a great job right now as he's closing in, coming through the carousel for the final time. Ooh, I believe something happened to Yusuf Ghali. Potentially, we'll check on it here in a little bit, but all eyes on Bolin as he brings it down into eight and nine for the last time this evening. And outside of the green flag pit stop, he has been the driver in control of this race, start to finish. So only fitting that he gets to bring it around nine the final time, come back onto the front stretch and cap it off with a little bit of a drift there to bring it through the grass and come home with a victory and win tonight's iRacing series, NASCAR iRacing series event at Watkins Glen. We can see the rest of the field makes their way through. Here comes Matt Busa. So we're waiting to see. Here comes Raja Karouf as well. He is finishing up his lap. Spousey as well. Dylan Jones, another great run for him here tonight. We're waiting and see how Karouf is going to bounce as he nearly gets into it with Mike Springer, who nearly got into the inside Onco barrier there, but uh, Karuth and Liebert and 
Springer all racing. This is for 11th, 12th, and 13th on the racetrack as uh, Karuth picked up some damage midway through that final run, and we shall see how they oh. do it. Oh, Karuth, I think, got sick. Nice I spring. think he did. He's going to get smacked to the wall. It hits the fence, and it's going to stuff it into the inside barrier, and Karuth is going to rent right at the end of this, and uh, we'll see if he can back it across. The, he will indeed back it across the line. I had a feeling he might, and uh, is going to finish off last car on the lead lap in the 14th position unfortunate but great race unfortunate for Raja but overall there was some great racing here on the track yeah definitely without question no question that Springer got into the back of Ruth and Ruth tried to save it and then couldn't and looped it and just caught some of the tires there on the outside of the tire barrier so We'll go ahead and take a look at your full field rundown and show you where your favorite driver finished as Graham Bowen burns it down over in turn one, as drivers tend to do here at the Glen. He's tonight's winner in the NASCAR iRacing Series top split race at Watkins Glen over Agassiz Catapino in seconds. Matt Busa, elite series driver here at Podium Esports, comes over in third. Sean Peeling finished in fourth. Briar LaPrade finished in the fifth spot. Brett Fousey took sixth at the end of the ninth. Dylan Jones, elite series driver, finished in seventh, eighth. Is the 35 of Santi Agudo. Thomas Bressi finished in the ninth position, and Charlie Ryan rounded out the top 10. Coming home in 11th position will be Jarrett Libier, followed by Mike Springer in 12th. Colton Salek will finish in 13th position, with Raja Karaf will round out your lead lap cars in 14th. Jordan Kalen will come home in 15th, one lap down, followed by Matthew Holson in 16th, with the likes of Austin Johnson in 17th. EJ Lally will come home 18th, with John Theodore 19th, and Justin Gable rounding out your top 20. 21st was Nick Northrup. Thomas McGregor finished in 22nd. All these cars won't lap down. 23rd was Ryan Farmer, and Ryan Cowley was 24th. Spencer Owens finished in the 25th spot. 26th belongs to Sean Williams. Yusuf Cowley had issues right at the end and finishes in the 27th spot. Maxwell Caldwell finished in 28th, 29th. There's Robert Clements and Eli Gorton in the 33 finished in 30th. 31st goes to Scott Lamp, and the rest of the field did not finish the race. Anthony Garcia will come home 32nd, Kyle Manger 33rd, Freddie De La Rosa will come home 34th with Hunter Combs 35th, Daniel Falkingham will come home 36th, another podium esports driver, and Katie Height will round out your 37th in Carfield. And we will be right back with our final thoughts here from Watkins Glen.
Welcome back to coverage of the NASCAR iRacing Series here on the Podium Esports Network. Our first ever broadcast of the top split on the 9 p.m. Thursday night sessions that are so popular across iRacing. And Graham Bolin has won tonight's race at Watkins Glen. Now, normally here at this point in the race, we would go through our podium interviews and talk to your top three finishers. But uh, since we don't have Graham in the server, we're going to bring in the folks that are in the server. We start first with Colton Salek, who came home in the 13th spot, driving the number 11 machine. And Colton, uh, just generally speaking, talk about the challenge of Watkins Glen in this Class A car. Uh, you've got so much torque, so much power, and especially on a high-speed road course like this. How tough is it to get around here? It, it's pretty difficult. Um, you know, you go. we're used to the 550 horsepower all season long this year with the new package for 2019. And then when you come to all the short tracks and the road courses, they bump it back up to 750. So we have to deal with getting used to putting power down. You know, have, now we actually have to be smooth on the throttle, as well as, you know, elevation change going up through the S's, the high curbs and the bus stops that got me a couple times throughout the night. And, um, you know, a bunch of bunch of new aspects that we're not you really used to. But, uh, you know, got to gotta learn and fight through it and just know that everyone else is dealing with it and, you know, go on. I think if my memory serves me correctly, you got caught up in that lap one incident where I think Katie Height got turned along with somebody else and you ended up with some front end damage. Did that hinder you a lot tonight? Did you notice it down the straights or was it just sort of a So I think there that was a separate incident. I I got the front end damage going it out into turn one. I tried to tuck down to the inside of uh, I think Santi in the thirty five and I uh, I missed my breaking point. Had to tuck back in and got into the back of him. And for like five or six laps, you know, no big deal. Just, you know, trying to nurse it, get used to it. Um, power was mostly there. I couldn't really notice. I was never able to, you know, check RPM or check anything like that. But about on like lap eight or nine, I started noticing my temps were in the red. So I had to basically nurse the motor for the entire race, you know, running in fourth gear and places I should be in third, third where I should be in second, like, you know, kind of just keep an eye on the temps all race, which you know, didn't make the challenging track any easier for me. But, you know, I feel like we settled with a pretty all right finish tonight. An all right finish and a completely different prospect next week at Michigan. Uh, you excited? You have a sense of what you should expect from there, especially uh, since it'll be the second time in the summer we've gone there with the new package. Yes, Michigan, I am beyond excited for. It um, always generates good, you know, four wide for the lead at some points, like just completely you know, nuts, but we, uh, we're usually pretty good there. It require you got, uh, usually we're given a loose car in the fix setup. So it takes kind of a little bit more of a driver than, uh, most of the other track. It's kind of a driver's track this year. And I, you know, I'm excited to get there and have some pack racing, but also, you know, some long green flag runs and get back to just turning left. <laughs> you're good with this road course stuff for another year colton before we let you go as always here on the podium esports network take a moment to send your thank yous to sponsors shout outs to friends and family and let everyone on who makes it happen for you um everyone on impulse racing andrew Payne, um dylan simmons all those guys um tanner Talarico with Talarico signs and designs he um tanner's a big help you know, just from straight up driving and overall from you know building paints and making my cars always look good um again uh thank dj lion for the help everyone that you know kind of helps support me and teach me you know help me move up in the ranks well colton uh you you survived so credit to you on that thanks for taking some time up here in the booth here on the podium broadcast to speak to us and uh, figure we might have a chance to see you next week in michigan yep hopefully all right thank you guys there's colton so like you I believe 13th place finisher. And at this stage, we welcome the 45 of you who came in off of a certain John Theodore's stream. As Theodore, uh, maybe not necessarily uh, the happiest of races for him, got a lot of damage early on. But we do have John Theodore here with us to talk about what happened during the race post race. And he is with Taylor Burris. Yes, indeed. Here with John Theodore finishing in 19th here today. John, it seemed like it was a little bit of a tough race, but you were managed to get through and finish the race. How does the car feel for you? Uh, it feels good. I love um, driving these big stock cars at uh, these road course tracks. I'm not particularly good at it, but um, they're a lot of fun to drive. 
definitely disappointed to lose those three spots on the final corner, couple corners there, but that's how it goes sometimes. Still a lot of fun, and uh, I'll mark this one down as improvement for me on the road courses. Good to hear. Always good to improve upon it when you come back to a road course. Now, as we get ready for Michigan, we're coming back to that for the second time this year. How do you plan on surviving that race as far as with how the package works? It's definitely going to be a battle of survival. Michigan almost drives like uh, kind of the way it drives kind of reminds me of um, like really old school Daytona races, you know, like back in the 90s where handling actually mattered at Daytona and stuff like that. So, you know, the draft's going to be important. It's just, you know, going to be all about trying to survive in that big pack. Restarts are going to be really dangerous. Just keep the fenders on it so that the thing's sleek and aerodynamic. Um, and hope we get some long runs and can play some uh, pit strategy and try to get things to go our way. Very good, and we look forward to seeing you there at the next race. And before you go, John, is there anyone you would like to thank here? Definitely uh, thank all my Twitch viewers. You guys are awesome. Um, you know, it's really – it gets a little crowded in the car when we got like 70 or 80 folks in there and there's only one seat, but somehow we managed to make it work. Um, and also, obviously, big shout-out to uh, – Corey Bush, who I'm very proud and happy to uh, carry her colors on the car as she's running for uh, Congress out there and looking to uh, put a dent in the uh, political corruption that plagues our political system. Uh, very good. Well, we look forward to seeing you at the next round, John, and congratulations again for finishing the race. Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Have a good one. That was John Theodore finishing in the 19th position here at Watkins Glen. And I suppose at this point, we can't do Shieldhouse's House of Final Thoughts, but can, can we do Burris's Burrow of Final Thoughts, perhaps? I figure that works, right? Yeah, we can go with that for right now. Let's see what we can do. Uh, final thoughts for today's race. I mean, you got to go with what Graham Boland was able to do. Just a dominating performance. Definitely knew how to work this car with this package here coming to Watkins Glen. Some drivers thought it was a good idea for running this race as far as how the package worked for them. I saw some drivers who were not too happy with how the package worked here for this track. So I'm pretty sure some drivers are going to go back to the drawing board as far as finding ways to try to find better lines in these fixed setups. And then, of course, a lot of drivers felt real comfortable and did very good jobs with their improvement of this race. I mean, we've seen some drivers starting way back inside the top, outside the top 20 and work their way almost into the top 10. So great drive for some of these drivers. And I'm pretty sure they're looking forward to the next time we go to road course racing later in the season at Charlotte. Yeah, wild to think that we're not terribly far away from another road course race here. Maybe about, uh, call it two months-ish if you want to do the math. But for the most part, uh, we, we got a little bit of time to settle into uh, oval racing for a bit. And some interesting tracks coming up over the next few weeks. You've got Michigan, Bristol, Darlington, Indianapolis all on the horizon and all definitely tracks that the travelers will need to watch out for. Remind you, though, uh, before we go here, two things of note. First and foremost, if uh, you like what you've seen on the Podium Esports broadcast of this top split of the NASCAR iRacing Series, you'll have more of us on Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Tune in here for the season opener for the Podium Esports Oval Series, which will head to Charlotte Motor Speedway. We'll be racing the Class B and Class C cars and trucks on the same track at the same time. Multi-class oval racing, which you know, I think will be a first in any sort of league here on iRacing in a long, long time that's had any sort of broadcast like this. So should be a treat to see how the trucks and the Xfinity cars come together. And we'll see the action from Charlotte Motor Speedway this Sunday night, August 4th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. That will just about do it for us here on the Podium Esports Network. We're going to head over to Sprinkle Source's channel for our post-broadcast raid here in just a moment. I'll play Minecraft, no surprise. Uh, certainly one of her favorites, I know. So we'll go hang with Sprinkle Source. But for now, we're going to sign off from our first broadcast of the NASCAR iRacing Series, but certainly not the last. We'll be back every Thursday night at uh, just after 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, or Standard Time, depending on where we are and things, and to bring you action from top endurance class a series in racing in i racing for all of us at podium esports for dj lyon and gary sexton for john theodore for uh, 
uh, my partner in the booth, Mr. Taylor Booz, and our producer, Cisco Scaramuza. I am James Frank. Thank you so much for watching tonight's broadcast of the NASCAR iRacing Series on Cody. We look forward to seeing you all on Sunday night for the season of earning of the Oval Series from Charlotte.